Premier, good to see you. Good to see you as well, Rosie. So you have hit 75% uh, of your population with one dose. I think that happened this week. Uh, Dr. Teresa Tam called the territory a model for the country. Uh, wh what do you say to that in terms of, or how do you explain the success, I guess, of what's been happening there? Well, it's high praise, but that accol accolade also comes with an awful lot of responsibility. Um, you know, we are leading the country when it comes to vaccination, and that work is continuing. We just uh, confirmed uh, working with the federal government to have enough Pfizer to get our uh, our youth 12 to 17 vaccinated as well, and so that's starting to roll out. Um, so, yeah, all eyes are definitely on UConn. And a lot of the credit goes to uh, a very sophisticated health and social services department uh, under the lead of uh, Tracy McPhee, uh, our minister. Uh, the teams Balto and Togo uh, had these amazing uh, tours into the rural communities and Team Fox here in Whitehorse uh, being able to vaccinate uh, in uh, in town as well but really like from the very beginning uh, our ability to communicate with the rural communities with mayors and councils the ayc uh, organization but also through direct conversations yeah. with the mayors but our yukon forum has really re-established uh, communications and uh with the first nations chiefs yeah. so early days when misinformation was flying around you know we really had a, a conduit of communication to very powerful leaders in all of our communities which really helped coordinate the message and then uh, couple that with a very sophisticated health and social services team, uh, we were able to get the message out and get those shots into people's arms. So I, I know the United States, I'm sure you've seen this, in, in many states is, is really plateauing in terms of uh, the, the second dose as well. Uh, and I wonder, what, what, have, what has UConn done in terms of getting the vaccine to those harder to reach communities or remote communities? I imagine you've, you've had to bring it there. Um, how, how, how significant has that been in terms of making sure that people get vaccinated, bringing it to them? Very significant, and again, um, making sure that uh, you know the lead is there with uh, with our community leaders. You know, I had the opportunity in Dawson City to uh, to get vaccinated with the mayor, myself, uh, the deputy chief, uh, and uh, and two uh, extremely um, <clears throat> well respected elders in the community. And I think that that you know showing that leadership in in all of the communities that makes a lot of sense. And uh, you know, again, you know, when you came into the clinic, uh, you felt like family. You were treated like yeah. family. Uh, and the uh, the experts that were on the mobile teams, they were just they're just great Yukoners. They're just good people. Uh, there's a lot of family connections in Yukon as well. So you know, if you know your auntie in Dawson City is getting vaccinated, uh, and if you live in Old Crow or if you live in Carmax, then that helps as well. It, it wasn't just one thing. It yeah. was. Uh, it was a lot of coordinated effort. You, um, I think you've, you've got more than 60% fully vaccinated too, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, is that, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, 67 yeah. with their second shot already, yeah. So what does that mean for Yukon summer? Because, you know, the Prime Minister's uh, come up with this catchphrase of a one-dose summer. I, I, it seems like it's gonna be better than that up there. So, so what will summer look like in, in your territory? We just launched through our uh, tourism and culture department the Great Yukon Summer uh, event, uh, which is a tourism incentive, uh, putting some money into events uh, all the way across the Yukon uh, to really promote uh, 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 like Yukoners traveling in Yukon for now. You know, I mean, we, we did announce that, uh, you know, as of uh, Tuesday uh, of uh, a couple of days from now, uh, that uh, anybody uh, that is fully vaccinated uh, and 14 days from their last shot can travel in the Yukon without any self-isolation uh, requirements, uh, which also, Rosie, helped to uh, boost up some of the numbers here for vaccinations in, in Yukon. Um, but uh, we know that that's going to be uh, smaller numbers for the rest of Canada right now, so we're really in encouraging Yukoners to get to know uh, our own backyard again. You know, in Dawson City, in my riding, we have the amazing Tombstone uh, Park. We have uh, Kluwani has amazing glacial to glacial tours. It's it really is one of the most beautiful places in Canada, the Yukon, uh, and uh, so we really think that this summer is going to be uh, n as near normal as we can get, and and, and definitely uh, a, a different summer than than last summer. So we're promoting people to get out there and move. 
I think people just want to dance again. People mm -hmm. want to go to festivals, yeah. Yeah. you know, so uh, we're going to prepare for that. You, you are, though, I think, allowing BCers, too, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, to come in if they are fully vaccinated. And there has been some questions from the opposition and, and others about how you, how you make sure, how you verify that people are vaccinated. Um, I, I think the plan is to get them to attest to it, and then you can go and look at their medical records. And I'm just wondering how you manage uh, privacy issues around that and whether you think Canada should be creating some sort of domestic vaccine passport to, to facilitate things. Yeah, so basically, uh, starting Tuesday, uh, anybody in Canada uh, oh, anybody. You know, okay. uh, can travel. Uh, yeah, uh, but it, it's, it's that verification piece, right? So uh, you need to sign a declaration that you've been fully vaccinated and, and that at least 14 days since your last shot. But you also need to provide consent for the verification of that vaccine status in order to uh, be exempt from our self-isolation requirement. So personal health information will only be ex accessed by health and social services staff, that are authorized under our HIPMA, uh, the Health Information Protection and Management Act, uh, and no one will be compelled to share any personal information either. If an individual doesn't want to consent uh, to providing that information, they can still enter the territory as they can now, as long as they self-isolate for 14 days. But you're right, right now, uh, our ability to uh, to confirm is for, uh, you know, we're in a position to verify that vaccine status for BC residents and Yukoners right. right now. And we're currently working with our pa partners in other jurisdictions to sort out uh, how that verification will work. And that's what my health minister, Tracy McPhee, uh, she's also my justice minister as well. <laughs> so her team, they've been working very, very closely to ensure that we can verify this information in the least intrinsic way possible. Because I guess I guess part of this means that the, the onus is on the person to, to, to be honest about about, about their vaccination status. Um, and, and so I, that's why I asked the question about whether you think the country should be considering or, or whether it could be raised at the first minister's meeting this coming week, some sort of domestic verification so that you don't have to come up with your own plan and then Ontario comes up with its own plan, something that would be, uh, you know, pan-Canadian. It, it would be helpful because it's, it's not just a, I'm honest about this. No, sure. you have to sign a declaration that we can look at your health uh, records. So and, and that's where, you know, the, that's where the details are to come. And we will be working with other jurisdictions. We're doing that now to see how that is. We're kind of like a snowplow right now for this, though, Rosie, because uh, on the federal conversation, a lot of jurisdictions aren't where we are right yeah. now to have that conversation. Right. So uh, at the Council of the Federation conversations and the first minister's meetings, uh, this is what UConn presents and says, you know, this is, like I said, when we started this interview, this is, uh, it's a great accolade from Teresa Tam, but there's a huge responsibility here as well, because we are the first region in Canada uh, that is testing the boundaries about how we can uh, do this. So, it, yeah, it's, uh, it's a conversation we want to see at the federal level. They've been talking about apps on phones, national apps, those types of things. Uh, that would be great. We have a very sophisticated health uh, department right now, a very modern. We've been updating our health systems, digitizing our health systems. Um, but uh, we're probably ahead of Canada in that pursuit as well. So uh, it, it would be very helpful to see a national campaign. Okay, Premier Silver. Well, congratulations on, on where you're at so far. And uh, I hope the rest goes smoothly too. Thanks for making the time this morning. Thank you very much, Rosie.